Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. I hope you had a very nice day. Today is Wednesday and we are starting our third week of class. So as usual, we're going to check about the platform. That is we uh, what we always do. So this is the class of today and that is the question of today. And uh, for tonight, we should be going on to the 2.8 homework. That is optional, so you are going to check this one, which is the card option. Then read the paragraph, well, the story there, and we're going to check according to the reading. And that's it. That's the thing for today. But we are going to check about the attendance, definitely. So let's go to that one. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza Ana Claudia González Velázquez Present teacher Good Dani Josué García Martínez Fernando Marvin González Martínez Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. 
Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. So we are going to start the class of Only today. Teacher present. Ah, perfect. Good, Heidi. Okay. Okay, so we are going to start the class of today and uh, we're going to start with a little video. So, and you are going to tell me about the video, of course. Just check it to this. Okay, so here we go. How many decisions do you think you make each day? If you ask the internet, the answer will range from 70 to 35,000. If you ask us, it's the wrong question to be asking at all. That's because we're interested in ethics. We're not concerned about the quantity of your decisions. We care about their quality. You might want to think of ethics as a tool that helps us create the difference between a good decision and a bad one. Ethics is the branch of philosophy that asks the practical question, what should we do? This leads to the study of things like values, principles, beliefs and norms. These are the things that shape our choices. Ethics asks us, how should we live? What choices should we make? And what makes our lives worth living? It tries to help us define the conditions of a good choice and then figure out which of our available options is the best one. Let's say a close friend, Lee, confides in you that they're struggling with depression. They're feeling isolated and alone. But whenever they're invited to go out, they find it impossible to do. Lee insists they don't want anyone else to know. They're trusting this information to you alone. A few days later, another friend comes to you, frustrated about Lee. Lee's flaked on plans at the last minute yet again, and your friend has had enough. They've decided they just won't bother inviting Lee out anymore. So you're torn. If Lee stops being invited to things, the isolation could make them feel even worse. Sharing information about their depression might help Lee be treated with more empathy and compassion. But it would be a breach of trust. And if Lee found out, especially in a vulnerable state, who knows what might happen? What do you do? Keep the secret and allow Lee to be socially isolated? Or break Lee's trust, but do it for their benefit? Answering this question means getting clear on what matters, our values and principles. Our values are the things we hold to be good and therefore care about most deeply. Things like justice, knowledge, family and equality. In this case, we're likely to value both trustworthiness and compassion, which pull us in different directions. So it looks like an appeal to values alone won't let us solve this dilemma. We don't just need to know what's good, we need to know what's right. This is where principles come in. They help us draw a line in the sand. They determine the acceptable ways of getting the things that we value. So what's our guiding principle with regard to Lee? Some people might adopt a principle like be true to your word, meaning you keep Lee's confidence no matter the risks. Others might be inclined towards a principle like act in people's best interests and decide that it's in Lee's best interest that people know about the depression. Of course, there are still ambiguities, which is part of what makes ethical decision making so complicated. So how do we select which values and principles to adopt? And how do we make choices when we face a conflict of values and principles? Good versus good, right versus right. What helps to orient our judgment is a connection to purpose. What's our guiding North Star? What's our reason for being? Think about Lee again. Now, think about the purpose of friendship. What are friends for? Think about why Lee decided to tell you in confidence. Your purpose as Lee's friend is to share their life with them, 
the highs and the lows, but it's their life and it's their decision on who they share it with. Lee chose to share this information with you alone. Given this, even if you prefer to act in people's best interests, thinking about purpose and thinking about Lee's purpose might encourage you to take a different path. Every time we make a choice, we change the world. What kind of world do you want to live in? Whether you make 35,000 choices a day or just one, what's important is that you make choices that are good and right. Choices you can justify, ones you can be proud of. That's what makes the choices actively yours. Okay, what did you get from this video? Difficult position because sometimes we think we may think that we are doing things because it's the right thing to do, but it's maybe it's not ethical. Mm, it was a hard example because we may in this situation the one for the example we may think that let them other people about this guy problem should help them to to treat him different in a comprehensive way but in we are not ethic because we are not keeping his secret difficult okay. Very well. Yeah, actually, that is a big problem for me because you have options, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but any option, any path that you take is going to take a, a consequence. Mm -hmm. So it's a big deal. Actually. Mm -hmm. it's a big deal. Good, perfect. Any other comment about what we saw in the video? Uh, hi, anybody else? Well, it was uh, kind of interesting uh, it's talking about ethics, and that is the topic of today. So, for you, my friends, what is ethics in your own words? For me, it's like uh, the mm, some uh, rules or parameters to respect, which mark the, the respect for one to others. Uh, I know, I don't know, it's so <laughs> difficult because. Mm, I think is when so when you expect to be ethic or you expect someone be ethic is because they are going to do the right thing. But also you mentioned that when we make decisions, yes, always there will be consequences. Mm. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would think that they are like kind of rules and help us with uh, a, our, with our behavior, mm, but I'm not sure. Interesting. Um, for, for me, teacher, yeah. is the sum of values, principles, beliefs that um, they give us the, the parameter to act. Okay, interesting the words that you use, values, principles, mm -hmm. belief. In my opinion, it's like moral principle, uh, maybe honesty, uh, integrity, and values that you have and you show with your behavior. 
Very good. So uh, interesting as well, because you ask about specific values, honesty, and uh, some others that you show in your behavior. It's not that you say that I have, but you can show in the way that you act. Good, very good. Maybe <clears throat> teacher like the like like the other guys like the other guys said before, uh, is so uh, the parameters, the rules, the values uh, that you have uh, who are aligned to your beliefs. Okay, because uh, for example, uh, I believe in a equity society. I don't know if it's okay to say this. Yeah. Sociedad, uh, uh -huh, como en equidad. Equal. Well, uh -huh. equal society. Yeah. Uh -huh, where uh, no other people um, bother you in any way. Okay, but. There are many other uh, societies uh, who has or who have another religions that they let or they act against against my beliefs. For example, uh, all that people who feels in the name of God, their beliefs are distinct or are not. Uh, similar that mine, but their values in the things that they believe, they are aligned. Uh, no, uh -huh. the values that they have are aligned to the beliefs that they have. So it's kind of uh, complicated because the uh, I think it's related to where do you live in, where do you do, what do you do, sorry, and so many other things that uh, um, that make these ethics behaviors or a, ah, uh -huh, yes, that, these ethics behaviors, a, this thing to, between one people to another people. Okay, that is also very important. I mean, yes, we have values, we have principles, we have rules, but everybody has different rules, values, principles. So everybody has different level of ethics. Of course, uh, we have some things in common. Things are aligned, right? There are things where we match and we agree with other people, but of course it's not exactly the same. Good. Any other comment about this? Okay. So let's talk about values. What are values? What is the, the concept of values? What is that? Maybe all uh, those parameters or those uh, yeah parameters maybe that uh, you follow in order to to be a better person. For example, uh, integrity. Uh, maybe. Uh, The ethics, like like itself, uh, compromise with uh, talking about an, a company, compromise with uh, your company, uh, working uh, the best that you can do in order to do uh, the best things for your company, uh, but they are aligned. With, like I said before, with the things that you really live in. Uh, okay. I think, I think there is a, I don't know how to say, a frame. Yeah, a frame, como un marco. Uh -huh. uh, 
uh, a frame uh, which is uh, kind of generalized in society. And uh, the society uh, guides you to, to show what are the what are those values, but at the end, you have the decision to, to follow these values or not follow these values in order to, to be a, a good person. Or uh, being a uh, half good, half bad person depends maybe the situation that you are uh, facing. Okay. Very good. So, uh, yeah, there are many values that are included in this one. And there is like a frame, as you say, everybody has like a list of values that you believe it represents you. Um, so what are the most common values that we expect from, let's say, a regular person? What are values that we expect that people have? Honesty. Honesty, definitely. What else? Tens of responsibility. Responsibility that is very important, right? That that includes many things to be uh, in time for things, uh, to do your job, to I mean be be careful with your family. There are many things that are included in responsibility, but that is something that we need to we expect from everybody. Any other value that we expect that everybody has? Only two? Oh, sincere. Uh, sincerity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sincerity is something that is also very important. Maybe we need to be careful. I mean, it's not the same sincerity than uh, just express yourself in a very bad way. I mean, sincerity is to say something, but in a good way, right? So uh, when you have a friend, for example, and you tell them, uh, you know, I have to tell you something about you. You always do this and it's not correct. So if you say something like that is nice, right? To be uh, honest in the way that you are going to say things about what you feel, what you have seen. Good. Any other besides sincerity? We have three already. Empathy. Empathy is also very important. That is something that, I mean, nowadays I believe we are losing that one because... I believe I was reading with my son once about that one, super individuality. Everybody believes that you are the only one who is right and that you are the only one who deserves respect and things like that. So it's a big problem that is uh, causing an impact in, in empathy. I mean, I try to understand you, even though. I, I I haven't lived that and I don't know exactly what you've been through, but I try to understand. I, I try to respect the way that you feel. It's a big problem nowadays, to be honest. Any other? Well, respectful. Being respectful is very important, right? Okay. Also, nowadays, it's a big, big problem because, I mean, you see there in the social media that everybody's providing opinion about everything but they are not respecting i mean they are not respectful in the way that they provide the opinion they are sometimes attacking people they are sometimes pointing out people in a negative way i mean because of that many people get depressed or even worse sometimes they go and suicide themselves so your opinion sometimes is very very important and it's something that um we need to be careful about that one. And of course, being respectful in many ways to men and to women. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are, being respectful is very, very important. Any other? Okay, there is another question. What happens when you find somebody that did not have 
any of those values. For example, you meet somebody and you know that this person is not honest or is not responsible. How do you feel? I mean, imagine that your boss is not responsible or not honest. In my personal case, if I don't find values in a person, I don't want to have any relationship with this person. Not interested. Very good. I believe that that is something that we always do, right? So when you feel that somebody doesn't have values, it's not the kind of person that it works to have a friendship or to do something together. So you, you don't want to be with that person. But sometimes, Sometimes you don't have a choice, right? Sometimes you work with people that they have different kind of values, different level, or they do not have one of these values that are very important for them. I mean, what happens in that kind of situation, in that kind of relationship? Um, for, for example, the chair, I, I think in, in that situation, and what I will, what I probably do is, um, perhaps uh, show with my example, what the values that person, uh, are lacking or are missing. Um, and with my action, always show my values. And even if that person is constantly attacking me, uh, I think the best uh, answer to that is just stay calm, keep calm, and, and also try to, to talk clear with that person Bye. and show and say, say, say them uh, what we expect from, from that person, what behavior we expect because it's not like we are classmates or I don't know, we are in the school. We are actually in the professional environment and we need to um, get or achieve a goal. And we are a team and always remark that, remark that uh, we are a team and we need to go forward as a team. So we don't need that breaks. We need that um, bad behavior, bad action. Very good, perfect, interesting. Yeah, that is an option. You can always go and talk with the person with respectful, of course, uh, in a way that they don't get offended or get more in trouble, right? So that is a good way. Any other opinion? I think it's kind of difficult because uh, if you have some values or you have values that uh, um, are uh, in your personality and you expect or you have another person in your, in your department maybe, <clears throat> it's kind of difficult even uh, if this person is your uh, your boss, in my personal case, uh, I faced a situation who was very, very, very complicated. Uh, at the end, uh, okay, my boss told me some things uh, to do, but uh, I didn't do it because and I explained this. Uh, I am I'm not going to do these things that you are telling to me because they are they are not aligned with my values and with my uh, way to work in in the company. So this person told me, okay, but I'm your boss. I'm telling you that you have to do. Okay, do whatever you want. If you want to go to human resources, go to that department, uh, tell them uh, that I am not uh, able to do the situation, but tell them why. 
okay? Because that the things that you are uh, telling me to do, that uh, these those things, uh, they are not correct, okay? So if you want to go to them, go with them, but tell the whole story, not the middle story or not the part of the story that you want to tell them, okay? <clears throat> and if and if you have another problem, uh, and uh, if we don't or we couldn't uh, um, arrange uh, in in the office, uh, it could be worse with you and with me. Okay, so we can arrange the situations, but off the office, like like men, okay? Uh, I, I have, I had to do so rude because the situation was very compromised and complicated and I didn't want it to, um, to be marked as people that I am not used to, to okay? It was very complicated, but I think that I faced that situation in a very, very professional way. Uh, at the end, <clears throat> people inside the, the company, they realized what, uh, what, um, what was happening. And at the end, they gave me the reason. Uh, for my boss, he he is not uh, working anymore in the company uh, because this kind of situation was so complicated that um, it was uh, demandas and situations like this, and they got they got they he he got fired. Okay, thank you for sharing. Yeah, it's complicated sometimes. Sometimes. You are in situations where it's difficult to handle. I mean, sometimes it's that difficult that you have to, to think it over a lot and then take the right decision. Being ethical um, is something that everybody admires, but it's not easy to do. It's like in the movies, right? You, I believe that uh, everybody will admire the characters in the movie where they die because of the principles and the values because they say, I am not going to do this one, right? And then actually die in the movie, but that is just a movie. In real life, it's uh, very, very difficult to be ethical and sometimes to, uh, to stay true to your values and principles so uh, you can handle these kind of situations in a very good way. It's very difficult. So speaking of that one, uh, we talked about values that are series of characteristics that we have, people have, and we expect from other people to have as well. But what are principles there? What is that? So what is that? What is a principle that you have in your life? Yeah, for example, I have, I never give up. Okay, that is a very good principle, never to give up. Always fight, always try to find a solution, always try to, uh, to find the way to fix situations. I am also like that. I really, I really like to, to find solutions to problems. Sometimes there are problems that you believe that they are, with no solutions, but you can find that one, right? So that is always a way. Good, that is a good principle. Any other principle that you have in your life? Live in peace with you first, with, with me first, and then with the other. So uh, okay. peace and love. <laughs> okay, peace and love. <laughs> uh, actually, that is a very good thing. And uh, peace is very difficult to find. I mean, mm -hmm. that is... It's a constant struggling that you have with you and the world, right? Mm -hmm. I think. But if you move, uh, you you go step by step, and you, you try to identify what makes That's you like. 
That's one thing at a time. That's the key. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Any other principle that you have in your life? Any principle? Uh, in my case, is um, avoid the avoid the conflict or try to avoid the conflict. Um, so peaceful the problem. And uh, for example, if I hear something bad about about other person, and I don't know, uh, and that thing that I will say is not worthy to say, I'm not saying things like that. I try to avoid uh, those kind of conflicts. Okay, very good. To avoid conflict is key also in uh, in your life, in everybody's life. Uh, yesterday, actually, we were checking that it doesn't matter what you do, there is always conflict. So also you need to to be smart and check the way that you are going to to handle conflicts, right? Because, uh, I mean, everybody has a temper and a character and everybody gets angry sometimes. But the way that you are going to handle the situations is something very important. Not to, I mean, you can have a, a conflict, but I mean, it doesn't mean that you are going to have fight. It means that you are going to try to to negotiate, that was a key word yesterday, negotiate and check what the other person has with empathy. Uh, what do they want to do? And then check what do you really want to do and then get to an agreement, right? So there's always conflict, but the way that we handle that one is very, very important. Good, any other? Any other principle that you have in your life? No other principle. Okay, very good. So uh, yes, this is something very interesting because, okay, for, for example, if you check about the video, it says that ethics is about the decisions that you make, the quality of the decision. So ethic is in every day's life and everybody. I mean, depending on what you're going to do, if you're going to, if you're on the street and you're going to help somebody or if you're not going to help, if you are going to be punctual, if you are going to help in, in your job, even when they don't ask you, if you are going to stay late because it's necessary I mean, but happy, right? Not just because you have to. There are many things that are involved in ethics and the way that you act is always there. And sometimes uh, little actions have a, a big impact in other people's life. There is a story that I really like to share. I share that with many people. And it's a very good thing. I mean, for uh, I will tell you this story right now. This is about uh, two kids. Uh, around eighth, ninth grade. And I mean, one kid, uh, let's put in a name, any name, let's say Charles. Charles was going with some friends to play soccer, right? The field. And they were playing and they were with a ball and things like that. And on the other side of the street, there was another kid. This kid was, uh, let's say, uh, Frank, okay? A friend was going in the opposite direction and he was uh, carrying a lot of books. He was wearing his glasses and other uh, kids that were older, they were bothering him, pushing him. Yeah, the books uh, flew away, the glasses flew away. And at the end, the kid was crying, right? So Charles was kind of sad. He was, he didn't feel well empathy right so he crossed the street and he said to frank don't worry don't listen to them they are stupid people that they know they don't know what they are what they want in the world and he helped him 
with the books, with the glasses, the kid was crying. And he said at the end, why don't you join us? Come and play soccer with us. So we we'll miss one person and you can, you can fix it if you want. So a friend said, okay, so just let me put my books inside of my house. I live here very near. And they were together. They play soccer. They became the best friends. Very good. And time passes on. And um, he he was very smart. Frank was very smart. He was the best in all the classes, but he also had a lot of friends. Everybody took care of him. He was very happy. And uh, the day of their graduation came. And uh, the teachers, they say, uh, you are going to, Frank, you are going to deliver the, the speech, the graduation speech. And then Frank said, okay, I'm going to do it. And Charles, that was his best friend, said, uh, I don't just care about this one. I mean, you're going to speak in front of the whole school with the teachers, with the parents, with everybody there listening to you. And he said, no, to be honest with you, I, I, I know exactly what I'm going to say. And the moment came and he was there in front of the whole school and he said, okay, everybody, first of all, I want to thank God for being here. I want to thank my parents because uh, they were the ones who helped me to be here. And especially, I want to thank Charles, who is my best friend. He doesn't know, but he saved my life. He said, I was taught to the different a long time ago and I was lonely and I was feeling so bad that the day that we met, I was carrying the books to my home because I didn't want my mom to suffer and go to school and take the books because that day I was going to kill myself. But he came, he gave me his hand, his friendship, and he helped me. And now here I am. So sometimes small actions, little things can change the life of other people. And that can be in a positive way or it can be in a negative way. And that depends on everybody, on you and me. We can make actually the world better or worse. It depends on every, every day's action, every day's behavior. So uh, speaking about ethics, we're talking about values and many other things. So we have values and we have a list of things that we expect. Some of you, you mentioned rules. Who creates these rules? Who decides what is ethical and what is not ethical? For me, teacher, the, the greatest part comes from, from the religions because okay. of the beliefs. Okay, so religion, they used to have a lot of values. Nowadays, it's maybe a little bit different, but in the past, uh, it was something that they expected to, right? Okay, very good. Any other opinion? Where, who creates these rules? Who creates these values? Other no, teacher, maybe who think about the how to trip other people, maybe, and um, he said and think about that about those kind of behaviors, I guess. Okay. And that's okay because you know it's our daily basics. Very good, perfect. So this is a very good question, right? Who creates these rules, these values? Why do you expect people to be responsible? Why cannot not be responsible in being a good person? Where do they come from? Okay. 
Actually, I have a reading about that one, but before that one, there is another question. Why some people break the rules, no matter the consequence? They know that there are going to be consequences, but they don't care. What do you believe that happens? Maybe uh, some uh, person break the rules when they are so rules, so strict, extremely, I don't know. Uh, maybe, uh, for example, when uh, you are working in a company and, and one of the rules is uh, a specific, where a specific type of, um, of clothes and they don't provide a uniform, for example, uh, if uh, you are in your first uh, job, maybe it's not possible get some new clothes to uh, according to the rules and maybe some people uh, break the rules for a situation like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are many reasons and maybe we need to understand people's lives so we can check why individuals break the rules, but that happens. I mean, for example, uh, one situation is like very common in El Salvador. Uh, maybe you know somebody in your office and your work that they are always late, always late. And the bus says you have to be here on time, you have to do this. And, and they come to the moment that says, if you are not on time, I'm going to fire you. I mean, and they get fired. I mean. But, but the, 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 sometimes it's, it's maybe it's uh, extremely because um, in, uh, for example, in accounting payables uh, or in final area is very common when at the end of the month, all the people are working too late. So uh, I remember in my previous year, I finished my work at 5 a.m. in the next day and I need, and I will, uh -huh. uh, no, and I, no, yo tenía que, I had. I had to. I had to, thank you. I had to uh, present again, at 7 a.m. So I just finished my work, come at home and take a shower and, and back. So I, that's why I, I, I was telling you that sometimes is maybe a rule, rules because uh, if Maybe um, sometimes are uh, special situation um, like that, and you can't uh, always uh, maybe uh, how can I say that? Um, I I remember that I I I need the job, and I will do my job. But in that case, that situation the time is it was a uh, very uh, difficult for me because uh, i finished my work at 5 a.m and i need to back home and back to the work and so the time is not on time for my next day work so yeah uh, I, I think that in some situation um you need to uh, be rude with the rules, but uh, sometimes uh, also people need to break the rules. I believe that is true. I mean, your situation is normal. I mean, it's actually mm -hmm. a special situation, but there mm -hmm. are people, and maybe the question is not about that situation, but people in normal conditions mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. don't stay, that they go home at five uh, in the afternoon o'clock. The next day they are late 15 minutes every day. Mm -hmm. Why? Sure. Even when the buses, they come and say, hey, my friend, I mean, you go home on time and you have everything that you need here. This is not good. 
And they continue doing that one. Mm, yeah, maybe it's, um, I don't know, maybe it's a, no sé, como, people used to um, doing something like that, maybe it's, it's common for for that people. Well, I remember in my previous job. Uh, well, I, I'm living in Soyapango, and I I had to move to Santa Elena, and I always always uh, be late. Like always was late. So, uh, well, in my case, I always finish my work at six, seven, eight, and middle night or something like that. It, it was very um, different situation, similar that uh, uh, I was talking. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, in that way, it's kind of understandable. And of course, you did something to change that one. Actually, mm -hmm. you moved, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and that is the behavior that we expect from people, that the normal behavior is for you to analyze and say, no, you know, I'm going to move. I'm going to change something in my life. But there are people that are not able to change behaviors and they mm -hmm. continue doing things. Even, I mean, there are people that actually they die. Doctors, they say, if you continue, I don't know, drinking alcohol, for example, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. And they die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's totally different. Maybe uh, the people doesn't matter about that situation and just live the moment. I don't know. Yeah, it's difficult to understand, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, if the doctor comes to me and say you are gonna die if you continue doing this, I try. I mean, try to change, change yeah. behaviors. Uh, for example, I I was kind of the same situation with you. I I live in Santa Ana. I, I used to. Uh, travel to San Salvador, I was always on time, always, mm -hmm. because uh, I, I'm very responsible. I mean, I, if I had to wake up at 3.30 in the morning, so I have to be at 6 in my job, that was me. And there were people that they live two blocks from the mm -hmm. job, and they are always late. Maybe mm -hmm. not always, but once or twice a week. I mean, and then, uh, I mean, but uh, for people that have different kinds of values that you expect that one because you expect to be responsible you expect people to come on time and you expect people to do certain things it's kind of complicated and try trying to understand why people continue in a behavior breaking rules even though they know that there is a negative consequence on that one why why that happens that is a question that is a valid a valid question right why do you believe that mm. is happening well in some uh, situation maybe people enjoy uh, break the rules for example when you are uh, paying for a how do you say um, nutritionist a nutritionist nutritionist so when you are paying for a, a, a diet, for example, uh, and you have a free day, you enjoy when you break your diet. Maybe uh, sometimes it's similar like that, but it's not uh, como una justificación. Uh, yeah, valid uh, reason. It's not a valid reason. Uh -huh, valid reason, yeah. Uh -huh. But maybe uh, some people, uh, enjoy uh, break some rules and or job i don't imagine how can i enjoy break the rules but maybe um, some people be happy with that for example when you have a um, co-worker um, problematic worker and you don't understand why that person is like that? You just doing your work and continue with your life. 
Yeah, but the other person is not happy if not if he or she is an, uh, producing problems, maybe, I don't know, uh, similar that the example, the previous example, maybe some people, some people enjoy break some rules or, or um, math to others. Okay. Yeah, actually, that is very interesting what you say, and that is true. Some people really enjoy that one, and that happens in all the levels. I mean, I, I know that you have had a relationship with a girlfriend or boyfriend that is like that one. They, they always want to fight, and you are like, relax. I mean, I just want to watch TV or something. That happens. Mm -hmm. I had, for mm -hmm. example, I, I, I used to teach for school. It was a bilingual school, and we had a kid, uh, and the kid, I mean, he was... He was tremendous. I mean, in the middle, uh, everybody had a very good discipline there. But in the middle of the class, he uh, stood up in the desks and jumps. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. school, the school had four levels, four floors. And once mm -hmm. he escalated the windows until the fourth floor, and everybody were like, "My goodness, he's gonna die." He was. Uh -huh. That happens. I mean. People sometimes are just like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's interesting how the behavior goes. And uh, if you go actually beyond that one, and I really love to see documentaries about people's behavior, for example, serial killers, right? You get to know that they, mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. do not have empathy and they enjoy hurting other people I mean, it's, it's interesting. And it's also interesting that there are causes for this behavior. I mean, they don't wake up a morning and say, I'm going to kill somebody today. So there are things that happen since they were a child and they grew up. There were things happening in his life or her life that at the end uh, caused these people to start behavior in this situation is very interesting it's very interesting and the, on the other hand maybe uh, when you are talking about the uh, company uh, maybe some people uh, break their rules because they are uncom uncomfortable with the environment in the in the in the company or in the team and they try to get uh, more attention. I don't know why, or I prefer uh, get a feedback, but I, I know that some people are like that, just try to get some attention when they break the rules. That is true. There are people that they really love attention, right? They, they really, I mean, there are, we are totally different. Everybody's different. Uh, let's say that, there are like the levels, right? And in the in between, we are all in the kind of same level. I mean, maybe we disagree on some things, but it's like a normal, normal way. Mm -hmm. But there are people that are beyond that one. So, and that is where conflicts, mm -hmm. where problems come, right? Yes. Good, interesting. So is middle shift and we're going to check the attendance, my friends. Let's see how it goes. Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present with you. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Sorry, teacher, I'm here. Ah, perfect, good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. 
María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. Okay. Let's continue. Now uh, we're going to check another video. Let's see how it goes. Let me just check. Okay, here we go. You rarely read about companies who play by the rules, but when an executive has a lapse in judgment, it's all over the news. Enron, WorldCom, Bernie Madoff, these names are all synonymous with fraud and unethical behavior. Unfortunately, it's not always easy to spot unethical behavior before it leads to disaster. So how exactly do you define ethics? The term ethics refers to an individual's own personal set of guidelines that determines how they make decisions and how they behave on a day-to-day -day basis. Ethics is very different from determining whether or not something is legal or illegal. Ethics goes above and beyond the law. So an act might be considered to be legal, but it might be considered to be unethical. But these are important personal decisions, and ethics guidelines can only go so far in providing some guidance for individuals in making these sorts of difficult decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. Companies are only as ethical as their employees, and employees take their cue from management. If managers, directors, and supervisors are crooked, that sets the tone for the entire organization. The tone at the top really talks about the attitudes and importance placed by leadership on certain kinds of behavior. What's more important, doing it right or doing it profitably? And if you have a leadership team that is more focused on the ends than the means, people will start to cut corners. When it comes to ethical decision making, in many organizations, people who succeed get rewarded, not people who do the job right. And that's a very, very important difference. Companies that reward ethical behavior, reporting wrongdoing, identifying losing opportunities, walking away from bad deals, those kinds of rewards encourage ethical behavior. Most importantly, if the employees see one set of rules for them and a different set of rules for their leadership team, it's a short step there between them deciding they should play by a different set of rules too. Ethics fit everybody. So when you find an organization with unethical rank and file, you should look at the tone at the top. Walt Pavlo was once a manager at MCI. He felt pressured by his bosses to cook the books, which led him to committing a fraud of his own, siphoning six million dollars into secret accounts. My bosses are paid much higher salaries, or getting greater stock options, or you know, they, they seem to be enjoying the fruits of this manipulation much more than I am. The customers of MCIs that are out there seem to be absconding with all this, this money. My bosses aren't reporting these people running off with this money um, that we had some evidence of, of a misappropriation of those funds. They're not reporting to the FBI, to internal auditors, to the FCC. Everybody's getting rich in this game except me. His fraud was a direct result of Tone at the Top. His managers wanted the numbers to add up. To do so, meant cooking the books. I didn't at first feel that my actions were unethical um, with actions that I were taking on behalf of the company. I did not. What I perceived at the time was that we have an immediate problem that needed to be addressed, but over the long term it could be remedied. So it was a little white lie that, that would cause no harm if the next quarter I could fix it. And I believe that that was exactly what my, my superiors were thinking at the time, too. Was it unethical in retrospect? Positively. Um, but at the time, it was easily justified. Walt saw everyone around him making money, and he wanted his piece of the pie. He took his cues from his supervisors and wanted in on the action. I'm missing something in my career here. What, how come I don't have all of that? You know, I, I, don't, I don't have that today. Where, where is that at in my 
professional life. So, you know, that part was missing. And I said, well, maybe, you know, with this manipulation that we're doing here and with the way that these guys are kind of carousing around, maybe that's how business is done. Maybe there is some gray area that you operate in, not illegal. It is important to know that there is a difference between ethics and the law. What is legal may not be ethical. From a legal perspective, we write laws, rules, and regulations that specifically make certain actions improper or illegal, and they make other actions acceptable. But that doesn't have anything to do with the ethics of the situation. It may be legal to do something and may not be right to do it. And so as a result, there are too many people that get caught up in whether something is illegal or a violation of some rule without paying attention to whether it's the right thing to do. If you have told a certain individual that you'll honor a contract, whether you are legally required to honor the contract, you are ethically bound because you said you would. As a fraud examiner, it is important to practice ethical behavior and set a visible example to the public. However, fraud examiners must also maintain the highest ethical standards even when their actions might not be seen by others. Ethics is about making the right decision, not because everybody's looking, but because nobody's looking. It's easy to do the right thing when you're under scrutiny. It's much more difficult to do the right thing when nobody's paying attention, especially when you're under pressure in a difficult environment. And in today's economy, the importance on making ethical choices is about doing the right thing whether anybody's looking or not. Equally as important to the fraud examiner is to ensure that their investigation is on the up and up and that no shortcuts are taken. In my view, the most common ethical challenge that fraud examiners face is the temptation to cut corners. The temptation to call a buddy from the police force, to call the, uh, your friend who used to be with you in your business and now works as an IRS examiner, that uh, colleague that, that used to work with you but now works inside a bank, and asking them for information that you should not otherwise have access to. It's tempting. It seems like it's going to make a big difference. It seems like it's going to help your case. But the end result is always the same. Sooner or later, you're going to have to sit on a stand and explain where you got that information. You're going to cost yourself whatever criminal penalties may be coming and possibly cost your buddy his job. You're not doing either of yourselves any favors. What looks like a shortcut suddenly ends up being not just the long way around, but the wrong way around. Cutting corners in a fraud examination is one way to see your name in the headlines and not in a favorable light. That's why it's important for fraud examiners to understand ethics and its role for the investigator, the company, and its employees. Okay, what did you get from this one? I already one word. Uh, any comments? Um, there are problems um, that can occur in company, different, different company. Um, if there are no correct controls in this in this company, uh, but they they are always discovered uh, those who had always um, far because they uh, always want more. The person, um, I think. Yeah, actually, that is it. I mean, uh, temptations, right? Money is one of the biggest temptations, and sometimes we have the power of changing things in ways yes. that are not ethical. So it's a big yes. problem. Exactly. It's for, it's for a reason. It's very important um, controls in the, in the company. Very good. Yeah, it's very important to have controls, not only internal, you know, but external. The government or some entities should be controlling some things. Very good, perfect. Any other comment about the video? Me, teacher. Go ahead. Uh, I I understand the, the temptation, like you say, but uh, you need to be honest and you need to be no you need to to be a, a control person and avoid all the temptation and try to keep the control even if the opportunity to take advantage of the situation is there 
because uh, you're a person with principles. That's it. Okay, very good, perfect. So, so that's the way you should be. I mean, you should be able to manage everything, to control everything, to do the things in the right way. Not everybody's the same, and sometimes, I mean, people, your friends, they can come and tell you, see, see, you know, you just need to do this and this, and then you will do this, and you will have this. Having, that is not good. Very good. Thank you, Fernando. Any other comments about this? Sorry, teacher, I have a question. What I, I don't, I didn't understand. I don't really understand what was the, the position that the person who was speaking uh, had. Uh, well, I, I don't remember exactly the position, but I know it was a, uh, regarding accounting because he was clearing the book, right? So he was changing the the figures in the in the book, so that was not good at all. And uh, it was related to to accounting. I don't exactly remember the name of that. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Um, well, um, I, I think that is uh, is important or it's important to mention uh, one phrase that some person said in the video that maybe we can think that um we can do something that is legal but it's not ethic and also and maybe we that can end up in a or seems to be the short way that the end uh, soon or late we will be in front of or uh, to face or act and, and maybe that ends in a long way to jail or loss or job or any other thing. So it's important to keep that in mind that sometimes seems to be a short way, a shortcut, but it's not the correct. We have to think about the consequence that mm, maybe that action could Provocate. Very good. Yeah, actually, that was a very interesting part. I mean, uh, not everything that is legal is ethical, and not everything that is ethical is legal. Sometimes people that they are more into the law, sometimes they forget about the things that are ethical or unethical, things that are right or wrong. So that is uh, important. Yeah, that was a very good thing. And uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. I mean, the shortcuts, I mean, you, uh, everybody here in El Salvador, we see people that they are not willing to wait in the traffic, right? They have a shortcut. They try to to go beyond and not waiting online. And even worse, sometimes uh, if somebody says, don't do that one, they get angry and they try to, I mean, it's a big problem. Uh, and of course, you know that that kind of people, they are not good. They won't be good in any uh, position of power or anything like that. And that's why people, they ask for values. Uh, they try to look for people with values in, in, in companies because they know that if you behave like in general, you will be able to behave. If you have the opportunity to do unethical things, you will be able to to say stop no i won't i won't do this one right so that is a good filter a filter for everybody is like that if i have the chance do i break the rules i mean do i do something that is not correct with little things like sh shortcuts in the traffic or to avoid staying in line so if you have a friend there in line you say hey give me permission to move on here if you do those kinds of things then your values are not good, right? In, and if you have this kind of behavior, if you have the chance, if you have the chance to commit a fraud, but you are going to be uh, with a lot of money or a better position or something like that, maybe 
it's not for sure, but it's very probable that you do something that is not correct. So you start with little things and then you move on with other things. That's the way it goes. So that's why ethics, values, principles are important for everybody, right? Any other comment about the video? No more comments, okay. So we're going to read a little bit more about ethics to, to learn what is it and where it comes from. So the first one says ethics, also called moral philosophy, the discipline concerned with what is normally good, and bad, and morally right or wrong. The term is also applied to any system of the or theory of moral values or principles. Exactly the words that we say here, right? Uh, somebody also use moral in the definition of ethics. So the first two paragraphs, or well, the second and the third are going to be for Sonia, could you please help us? Okay. Mm. It, ethic, uh, ethics uh, also actually of... I'm sorry to interrupt you the other one how should we live um, repeat please this one please this one please ah, okay okay how sure uh, we live shall we a a happiness or a uh, knowledge virtue or the creation creation uh, of beautiful objects if we chose happiness will it be our own or the happiness uh, of all and what of the more parti particular question that face use is it right to be dishonest in a good cause. Can we justify, justif uh, living justify. in, justify, living in opulence while elsewhere in the world people are starving? Is going to war, to war a uh, justice in case where it is likely that innocent, innocent people will be killed. Is it grow to clone a human being or the destroy human embrace in medical research? What are our obligation, if any, to the generation of humans? Humans, humans who will humans who will come after us, us. and ha, 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 us, us or us as us, us, uh -huh. us, us and to the non human animals going gone we share the planet. Let's continue. Uh, Eddings deals with, with, with such question at all levels. Each subject consisted of the fundamental users of practical decision making and its major concerns included the, the nature of ultimate value and the standards be which by which um, Human, by which human action can be judged, judged, giant, a ring or wrong, right or wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what did you understand on this one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't worry. 
<laughs> no. I'm, I'm going to help you, don't worry. So yes. this is like the introduction and actually it's a very good one. I mean, the first thing that we have to come in our lives is why do you live? Do you remember that in the last module I was asking you what is the meaning of life? So that is one of the first questions that we have to answer if we want to live a good life. If the answer is happiness, then you need to go and be happy, right? So relax, work, buy things that you need. Uh, if what you want to do is knowledge, then you need to read books. Uh, if you want to live in peace, then you need to meditate. You need to move to that one. But the meaning of life is different for everybody. So mm -hmm. that is the first question that we need to ask ourselves. Once we have the answer for that one, ethics, values, principles are going to be easier to, to have them, to embrace them, to live with those principles. And that is a very good thing. Okay. And there are many, many things that ethics can help you answer. So for example, Imagine this one. Um, there are some questions here that are pretty interesting. Can, uh, is it right to be dishonest in a good cause? I mean, you are going to help a lot of people, but you need to be dishonest in some things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the other? Can we justify living in opulence while elsewhere in the world people are starving? Actually, that is something that some people find unethical. If you have millions of dollars and you don't do anything to help other people, you're not a good person, right? So it's okay. going to war justify is in cases where it is likely that innocent people will be killed. Well, I really don't like wars to be honest with you, but everybody has their own point of view. Is it wrong to clone a human being or to destroy human embryos in medical research? Okay, so there are many questions that we can analyze about ethics. And ethics is going to be the ones that is going to give you the answer for these questions. And the answers, uh, what is interesting about this one is that ethics is moving, it's a dynamic thing. So for example, abortion, you know, some countries abortion is legal and it's something that they help women to do no matter the situation that happened. Some other, they they do not support that at all and you can go to jail. It doesn't matter the situation. So it's kind of interesting this thing because it's going to give us the answers on what we would like to do. Exactly. So is, is, is it comporting com uh, what the they behavior. do is behavior behavior the person in in this in this uh, situation um, um, each uh, human human the decision uh, attitude in the correct or or attitude uh, dishonest murder. That's it. So, exactly. and ethics okay. is going to be the key to exactly. answer this. Very good. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, okay, the next uh, other two paragraphs are going to be for Fernando. The terms ethics and morality are closely related. It is now common to refer to ethical judgment judgment or to ethical principles, where it once will have been more accurate to speak of moral judgments or moral principles. These applications are an extension of the meaning of edit. In early uses, uses the term refer not to morality itself, but to the field of study or branch of inquiry that has morality as its subject matters. In this sense, ethic is equivalent to moral philosophy. Although ethic has always been viewed as a branch of philosophy, it's all embracing practical natural links it with many other areas of study, including anthropology, 
biology, economics, history, polit politics, sociology, and theology. Yet, ethics remain distinct from such disciplines because it is not a matter of factual knowledge in the way that the science and other branches of inquiry are. Rather, it has to do with determining the nature of normative theories and applying this set of principle to practical moral problems. Good, what did you get from this? Uh, really? <laughs> I, I understand that it doesn't matter that all branch of philosophy or science study ethical principles and that the the really important things is practical these principles in the real life very good so yeah we can discuss a lot of things here right uh, many things but if you don't act the way that you should well it is nonsense very nice and moral is something that is linked with ethical and also is part of any I mean, ethical can be joined or can be linked to anything in the world. Good. The next one says this article, well, we're not going to read that one. The origin of ethics. So this is going to be for Marcus. Okay. When, when did ethics begin and how did it originate? If one has in mind ethics proper, um, e, a, the systematic study of what is morally right and wrong, it's clear that ethics could have come into existence only when the human beings start to reflect on the best way to live. This reflective stage emerged long after human society had developed some kind of moral, morality, usually in the form of customary standard of right and wrong conduct. The process of reflection tends to arise from such custom, even if in the end it may have found them wanting. Accordingly, ethics began with the introduction of the first moral codes. Okay, what do you get from this? Okay, um, I understand that the ethics begin or start with the when the human beings start to reflect on what the best way to lie, to live. Um, and when they start thinking about the, um, what is the correct and what is the, the wrong way to do something. And from that process of thinking or reflection about how to handle, um, the situation or the decision in this life and uh, that's where come from the the beginning of the ethics um yeah and as the paragraph said it start with the uh, the moral codes very good so there that is the origin of the ethics so there were some moral conducts right and wrong rules and uh, it came from that one so the next one is going to be for let's see maria alejandra is it possible for you maria alejandra sorry teacher give me a second okay then. Uh, start in virtually. Yes, please. Uh, virtually, uh, every human society has some form of myth, might, myth, myth to explain the origin of morality. In the Louvre in Paris, in Paris, there is a black Babylonian column with a relief showing the sun gone chamash 
representing the call of laws to Hammurabi. Hammurabi. Uh, no as the call of Hammurabi, the he, Hebrew. He, Hebrew Bible, Old Testament account of God giving the Ten Commandments to Moses. Moses. Moses on Mount, Mount Sinai might be considered be considered another example in the dialogue dialogue dialogue, dialogue prota, prota, protagoras yeah. by Plato protagoras yeah. Ah, protagoras yeah. by Plato there is a <laughs> a bewilding mythical account of the Zeus Zeus took Zeus took pity of the hapless humans who were phys physically not much for the other beasts. No make up for this deficient Zeus. Zeus. Yes. Gave, Zeus give humans a moral sense and the capacity for law and use and justice. Justice so that they could live in a large communities, communities and cooperate with uh, one other. One and another. One another, uh-huh. Okay, what did you get from this part? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> teacher. Okay. okay, it's very, it's very simple actually. Uh, there are many examples of uh, ethical or moral codes in the past, so there are some examples like the Code of Hammurabi, or the Ten Commandments in the Bible, or uh, the Dialogue of uh, Protagoras by Plato. And uh, so this is something that from the very beginning of humanity, people are discussing. I mean, what is the best way to, to behave? That What is the best way that people should act facing different kinds of things? So that would be it, and says that morality should be invested with all the mystery and power of divine origin is not surprising. This is something that um, uh, Heidi said, I mean, it comes from religion and that is it, that's what it says here. Nothing else could provide such strong reasons for accepting the moral law. By attributing a divine origin to morality, the priesthood became its interpreter and guardian, and thereby secured for itself a power that it will not really relinquish. This link between morality and religion has been so firmly forged that it is still sometimes asserted that there can be no morality without religion. According to this view, ethic is not an independent field of study, but rather a branch of theology. So it's interesting because, it, as Heidi says, it comes from religion. And in societies like the ones in Latin America, that happens a lot. I mean, you know that there are people that says, oh, I'm a Christian. And they expect that everybody, just because they say, I'm a Christian, everybody says, oh, no, you're a good person because you're a Christian. So the link exists between morality, ethics, and religion. That happens a lot. So the next one is going to be for Roberto Orellana. Can you please help us, Robert? Not possible. Okay, Jose Wilfredo. Not possible, Jose Wilfredo. Okay, Ana Claudia. Okay, teacher. Okay. Uh, is uh, starting with in, there is some difficulty? Yes, please. Okay. There is some difficulty already known to Plato with the view that morality was created by a divine power in his dialogue, uh, Edipro, I guess. Yeah, Othipro, uh -huh. yeah, Othipro, uh -huh. Plato considered the suggestion that is divine approval that makes an action good. Plato pointed out that if this were the case, one could not say that the goods, the, the gods, I'm sorry, the gods 
approve of such action because they are good. Why then, why then do they approve of them? Is their approval entire ar arbitrary? Arbitrary is the way how? Yeah. Ah, okay. Let them consider this impossible. And so held that there must be some standards of right or wrong that are independent of the likes and dislike of the gods. Modern philosophers have generally set Plato's arguments because the alternative implies that if, for example, the gods had happened to approve of torturing children and to disapprove of helping one's neighbors, then torture will have been good and neighbor neighbor lines bad. Good, mm. what do you get from this? Well, there is a discussion about uh, Plato philosophy because it, he says that there is like a line or there are a kind of limits because if for some gods, <laughs> uh, some things are good for others, some other things are bad. And there must be like a, a limit. Uh, it's like a, a, like arbitrarily like he's talking about. It, that is the, the word that I can find here that uh, it depends on the arbitrarity of those gods he argue in his dialogue um, that some of them are good and some of them are bad. So uh, isn't what is good or what is bad, it depends on the arbitrarity of those gods. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> crazy. Well, actually, you are right. It's a little crazy. But now we can answer the question that I was asking you before, right? Who decides what is good and what is bad? What is wrong and what is right? The gods. Yes, yeah, so the arbitrarily. Yeah, according according to philosophers that base this into gods, I mean, into religion, mm -hmm. uh, that is where it comes from. The, the origin of this one is religion, is the gods, is what they believe is good or bad. And that's why, in my opinion, this is changing a lot right now. I mean, uh, media, you can see that it's impacting a lot on our lives. Religion is decreasing and the values and ethical things are changing. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and the phrase I like the most here is the one that it says that Plato considered this impossible. And he held that there must be some standards of rights or wrongs. Yeah, exactly. There, there should be. So it's like, I mean, they were thinking they were analyzing life and they say at that time we should do this and we should avoid this other thing so it depends on the the um the philosophy philosophic school like can we say that exactly mm -hmm. the, i remember wrote, i wrote something in the past depending on the the which school they were uh, that those were the beliefs they they practice very good and also very interesting i mean it should have been very good to to analyze life and mm -hmm. at that time i mean nowadays maybe we analyze life once in a while right mm -hmm. but in those days it was something that was very important so uh, it was kind of good perfect thank you anna claudia mm -hmm. okay so the next one says problems of divine origin. So this one is going to be for Francisco. So teacher, Could you please in, help us read this paragraph? Hey teacher. Okay. Uh, modern thesis takes uh, money say that since good is good, good, good could not Possibly approve of torturing children, nor disapprove of 
helping neighborhood inside and this. However, the taste will have decent basically admit that there is a standard of goodness that is independent of God. Without an independent standard, it would be pointless to say that God is good. This could mean only that God is approved of by God. I seen therefore that even for those who believe in the existence of God, it is impossible to get a satisfactory account of the of morality in terms of divine Christ, a different account is needed. Good, what did you get from that one? Uh, it's a, a, <laughs> a little, it's a, a many information, teacher, but I try. And teacher, I, I don't know a face. A face? I, uh -huh. What do mean for? It's like a, like a thesis about a, a way of thinking. Ah, okay, it's like a thesis. Yeah, something like that. It's like uh, they were discussing about this for a long time and they came with this uh, way of thinking, yeah. Okay. I, I, I understand that uh, the paragraph the said that the relation is that the reading of morality uh, uh, but the way of the of the divine uh, but uh, the, 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 the paragraph uh, says is it that then is not a, is not a, a good way of relation that the reading of Morality with the divine or the, the creation, uh, because uh, they say they uh, approve, uh, for example, a torture, uh, or disapprove, uh, for example, a torturing children, nor disapprove of helping neighborhood. Uh, I think that the prophet uh, tried to say it, sure. Okay, very good. Yes, uh, this is uh, kind of uh, another point of view. I mean, it was uh, something that other schools, as uh, Ana Claudia said, were thinking. Very good, perfect, thank you. So let me just check. Uh, Juan Miguel, could you please help me with the other one? Okay. There are, there are other possible, yeah? Yeah, that's the one, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there are other possible connections between religion and morality. It has been said that even if standards of good and evil exist independently of God or the guns, divine revelation is the only reliable means of finding out what these standards are. An obvious problem with this view is that those who receive divine revelations or who consider themselves qualified to interpret them do not always agree on what is good and what is evil without an, accept an accepted criterion for the authenticity of a revelation or an interpretation. People are not better off so far as reaching moral agreement is concerned than they will be if they were to decide on good and evil them, themselves with no assistance from religion. Additionally, a more important link 
between religion and ethics was that religious was that religious teachings were thought to provide a reason for doing what is right. In its crudest form, the reason was that sorry, the reason was that those who obey the moral law will be rewarded by an eternity of bliss while everyone else rose in hell. In more sophisticated versions, the motivation provided by religion was more inspirational and less blat blatantly self-interested. Um, I don't see the, the other uh, phrases, whether it's in, whether, uh, yeah, whether in its crude or its sophisticated version or something in between religion does provide an answer to one of the great, of the great questions of ethics. Why should I be moral? See below ethics and reasons for action. As will be seen in the course of this article, however, the answer provided by religion is not only, is not the only one available. available. Okay, what do you think about that one? What do you get from this? Um, it's, it's kind of difficult, this, this kind of, this kind of lecture, but uh, the, the um, paragraph who I read uh, for the first time, uh, Oh, sorry, sorry. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, the first paragraph it's about to um to try to link the religion no to aha uh -huh, yeah to, to establish a connection uh between religion and ethics and uh, in ancient times maybe uh, all the people who uh, who has some revelations um they were who marked or who um build a frame about what is what what is good and evil but uh um if we see from another point uh, you can choose or you can a decide not with the religion, but maybe with uh, some behaviors, what is good and what is evil. Um, oh, let's see what else. Uh -huh. and, and the second paragraph is talking about a, uh, what religions what religions do in order to try to be ethic or try to behave in a, maybe not in a normal, but in a good way. Uh, for example, if you are good in life, when you die, you will be in heaven. But if you are bad in life, you will be in the chimbolero or in the hell. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, not all the behaviors are, ed are ethics, okay? Uh, and it's, <laughs> it's a, a um, how to say this, a serious question that we have to, that we have to do or that we have to ask for myself or for, or for ourselves. Uh, maybe I think this is my opinion related to these two paragraphs. Okay, very good, very interesting. Actually, uh, yes, uh, you can understand about uh, the life that we have right now. I mean, uh, I mean, this was very important, right? in the past and it's something that is still important at this point so it's interesting how everything has come and stay with 
with us until these days. So it's interesting. So uh, the next one is going to be for Roxana. Okay, let me see. The human ethic, no, no non-human behavior. Is correct, say it like that? Yeah, non-human behavior, yeah. Non-human behavior, thank you. Because for obviously reason, there is not, there is no historical record of a human society in the period before it had any stand of pride and warm. History cannot, cannot reveal, reveal? Reveal. Reveal, thank you. The origins of moral, morality, nor is anthropology of any help because all the human societies that have been studied so far are their own forms of morality except perhaps in the most extreme circumstance. Fortunately, another mode of inquiry is viable because living in social groups is a characteristic that humans share with many other animal species, including their closest relatives. The apes, is correct? Yeah, apes, apes. yeah. Okay, thank you. The apes, presumably, presuma, presumably, the common ancestors of human and apes also lived in social groups. Here, them in the social behavior of non-human animals and in the theory of evolution that, that explains such behavior may be found the origins of human morality. Good, what did you get from this? I'm not talking. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> okay. Maybe, um, let me see. I don't know if I don't get the main idea, but when I was reading, I am um, thinking uh, when uh, people associate the human with the monkey, maybe. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe in, in general, uh, the society maybe has, uh, have uh, the, um, um, idea about some uh, specific uh, behaviors in some circumstance, uh, but uh, not always is, um, how to say that, uh, um, the behaviors are uh, changing all the time. Uh, well, we, was, we were talking about uh, that all persons are, total, are totally different. And maybe you, when you uh, perhaps uh, are living a specific situation, uh, you thinking about uh, how the other person or, or uh, relatives can uh, um, can, uh, how do you say? can act or, or how can uh, show show them in front of uh, a specific situation. And maybe if you are, um, if you were in the past, if you were uh, living some situation, some similar situation with 
with your family or your close um, team or friends or something like that. And you maybe uh, have a similar situation with the rest of the society. Maybe you can get a um, main idea about the, about uh, the behavior, behavior about the other person maybe, but it's not, um, maybe uh, you can get an idea, but you, it's not, it's not, um, it's not always like that. Maybe uh, when we were talking about the society in general, the behaviors are totally, totally different. And well, I, I was saying that I remember the, the uh, comparative with the monkeys because uh, always when you are uh, watching some documentaries, uh, so documentals or documentaries? Documentaries. Okay, thank you. Maybe when uh, you were watching uh, some documentaries, uh, you can um, get some ideas uh, when the scientific? Scientific. Scientific, thank you. Uh, are uh, trying to uh, get the more similar uh, behaviors between monkeys and person. And they always try to uh, be a reason why uh, some uh, animals, or in that case, the monkeys, uh, doing some specific uh, actions and always they are comparative, they are uh, creating comparative with the person, but I think that is complex because in general, you can, you, you, you could um, create some similar uh, ideas or, or com create a, a similar um, behavior or no, no crear, no es como comparar. You can compare, compare, yeah. compare it some person and maybe some animals with person in the case, but the, the behaviors are totally, totally different uh, in different situation when you are uh, in your uh, close uh, team, uh, at work or with your friends or with your relatives or in general with the, just with the general society, the behaviors are very, very different. You can compare with other person, we can get um, the, maybe the, us the usual um, behavior because, uh, situation are totally different in different groups and different person and you can compare and you can get um, maybe a um, strong or um, I don't know, maybe you, you can get a specific behavior in a specific situation because uh, are the, the person and the situation and behaviors are totally, totally different in general. Maybe when you are talking about society, you can get a polite or ethic idea, but it not it's not always the same. Okay. Yeah, it's very interesting how, I mean, if we compare, as you were saying, and it's what it says the article about the theory of uh, evolution and the behavior of non-human animals. There are many things that we can take into consideration because, I mean, even animals, they have some behavior. Sometimes they act in some ways that you think, how is that possible, right? I mean, they're animals and 
that is something very, very interesting. Good, perfect. So it seems that it's time to go to bed. So we're going to check the attendance and we're going to continue tomorrow. Before we finish, is there any other thing that I can, any question that you can have? Okay, so let's check the attendance there. So, Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Got you. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin. Good. Sorry. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Ibrán Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Ok. Roxana y Peda Sancio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay. So the 101 for today is for Jose Wilfredo Ayala. For the rest of you, I hope you have a very nice evening. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Good night. Hi, hello, teacher. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? So far, so good, teacher. A little bit tired, but just for occupational hazard. So, you know, I'm in charge of common center. Okay. So that's why sometimes, uh, well, maybe three times a week, uh, the day is really hard because uh, the request that opts operation uh, sent to us are maybe uh, difficult to, well, difficult to what? Uh, maybe difficult to submit because I have to submit some skilling uh, for uh, the new ways that they are uh, training, but are, as I told you, occupational has me. Maybe yeah. just a little bit busy. Yeah, that happens sometimes, right? Sometimes there are some days that are kind of easy going, but there are some days that you are so busy that you get so tired. So same yeah. happens to me sometimes. But that's right. Time. Most of the time, uh, Monday is really hard day. And Monday, Tuesday, sometimes, and Wednesday. Then uh, Thursday and uh, Friday. So they are... Uh, really calm. Okay. That is very good because, I mean, at least it's not the whole week. Some people, they are screwed the whole week, right? So that yeah, is good. Yeah, that's right. And it's difficult because uh, we manage or like a team, like four, then our seven. So 11, 12. Like 15 LOBs, line of business. In my and so that's going so, to be. Yeah, that's really difficult because you need to be focused on if somebody uh, write on 
different chat. So you have to look for the chat and then you have to use a different tool for, for each LOB. But eh, it's uh, entertainment. That is good. That is good that you, I mean, you're happy in your job, right? It's hard, but you're happy, right? Yeah, um, that's right. Definitely. That's Since great. I'm at home, so it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, that is fantastic. It has changed my life, actually. <laughs> yeah. Good. That one, is time, good. Huh? one time I told to my boss, hey, boss, so you know, uh, the traffic is, ter is terrific. So, and uh, the boss told me, hey, what's going on if you are at home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good. <laughs> uh, and I told, I told him that, no, that's a yuck. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you are expecting a uh, high season uh, in this month that are coming. Yeah, for this month, uh, for well, maybe the the high season will start until the next month. Okay. And I work for uh, United Healthcare. Okay. Uh huh. That's why maybe. The next month gonna be high. Okay, so we need to move on that one. So that is a good thing. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sure, that's right. Yeah, that's why we're here. So, and regarding English, how do you feel that you're moving on? Do you feel that you are learning? That you are getting something? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm learning a lot, and also my fluency is improving. Very good. That is very nice. I'm happy to hear yeah. that one. So sometimes it's difficult because I speak with Hindi. Oh yeah, that is difficult. <laughs> I know. You know. I know. Those and Chinese people sometimes and yeah, and I have contact with Chinese too. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, it's Chinese and what is the other? Uh, I don't remember what's the other, but it's for that. Uh, um, it's for that what? It's for that. Uh, uh, let me see. I don't remember the that word right now, teacher. Okay. It's for that play. No, we don't have to use place for that. We use for those. Ah. Uh, I don't, I don't remember right now what is the, the correct word that I have to say, but you know, it's, it's for those countries. Yeah. Yeah. Those huh. accents sometimes are difficult for us. So yeah. Yeah. yeah are difficult. Are yeah. difficult. But when, when I to, to be a WFM, because I'm WFM uh, associate. Okay. It was really difficult to try to understand. And my boss is from Hindi too. So, okay. Eh, was well, complicated for me. Okay. But now, is it easy? That is good that you got used to it, and then, uh, I mean, that happens, you know. Even if you have a lovely experience, if, if your English is very good, uh, when you're speaking with people from other countries and they sometimes speak fast and with an accent, uh, I mean, is 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 something very difficult. So. But the good thing is that you are getting training in that as well. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, but now I swim like fish on the water. Good. That's very nice. I'm very happy to hear that one. So, and do you have any questions about the classes, the grammar, anything? No, teacher, no, to be honest, not. But I'm a study uh, grammar because, so you know, it's really hard to me. But sometimes I use um, one platform, you know what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I review some something and, well, try to improve every day. That's the way it is. Very good. So remember that if you have questions as today, you can ask me, you can chat with me directly or uh, with the group. So uh, it's going to be a pleasure to help you out. It was very good to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night and, well, of course, see you tomorrow. Well, of course, I will be there, teacher. I um, appreciate your time and thank you for your help, too. It's a pleasure. So, good night and see you around. Okay. Thank and you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.